Hey guys, it's Aaron though from Mobile Reviews A.C, and today I'm going to tell you what I think are the best car mounts, depending on where you want to put them in your car. I've been using a ton of car mounts over the last few years, as you can see in this current setup. This isn't a typical uh, driving setup for me, but I've got a lot of car mounts to, <laughs> to share with you guys. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the best car mounts for the different locations, as well as the pros and cons for each location. Kind of right off the bat, I am actually very uh, partial to these magnetic mounts because they can come on and off of your uh, off your dashboard or wherever you end up putting it really easily so it's just it's really nice to be able to easily pull your phone off of a mount as well as put it back on so based on using the car mounts in a bunch of different cars over the last few months i've broken down the areas into the following driver side window rear view mirror center dash vents the console area as well as the cup holder now i won't really focus on a specific brand as most of these car mounts uh, nobody really does anything special these vent mounts are a dime a dozen now before we get to the guts of this review I, there's two things you guys need to consider when ah, blinding sunlight about getting a uh, car mount is how big is your device and how often are you going to be mounting your uh, smartphone uh, so those are two questions to uh, keep in mind as you go through this video and hopefully it'll help you choose the uh, right car mount for you number five is the cup holder mount and i didn't think you could mount your uh, device in a cup holder but i did find this gear beast mount on amazon it was intriguing, so I bought it, and once I got it, immediately regretted it. Now, out of all the cars I've sat in, I've been unable to find a comfortable place to mount my car. The cup holder mount actually gets in the way of the gear shifter, which for me is pretty important in the operation of my manual transmission vehicle. Now, I think a cup holder mount may work for larger vehicles like trucks because the console areas are so large, but you're really losing that cup holder, which is incredibly useful because you tend to put anything other than cups in your cup holders. Number four goes to the console area. Now, from my experience, most of the products that suggest mounting it on your console are products that come with integrated magnets. Products like the Notice Leather Case, Night Eyes, and Magbacks would fall into this category. My biggest issue with mounting it on your console is that you're going to be covering something up. Now, there's probably a ton of buttons on your console that you've probably used once and don't really know what they are, are used for at this very moment. But, you know, for me, the moment I put a mag back with an iPhone in it and cover up a bunch of buttons, all I can think about are the buttons that I can't use, whether I know what they are or not. The other problem is that mounting it on a console will take away from the general design of the console. Removing these semi-permanent mounts is a pain in the butt. As you can see here, I've gotten so many, I've removed so many mounts from this location that I've actually damaged the console a bit. The only benefit of having it on the console area is that there's no chance that your device is going to overheat on a warm day or a hot day, which is something that does happen when you mount it on the windshield. Now, if I had to choose a console mount, I would probably go with a Night Eyes product because it gives you the best flexibility in terms of viewing angles. Last thing to consider is if you are going this route and you do have a bigger iPhone, the bigger iPhone is going to cover more of your console. Certain products like the Night Eyes will not work as well with larger products because the weight of the iPhone will change the viewing angle. It'll kind of slide down over time. Number two goes to the rear view mirror central dash area. Now, I see a lot of devices being mounted in this general area and for good reason. It's out of the way. Uh, it's not in the way like the console it doesn't require much effort to check and the screen can be viewed by generally anybody in the vehicle for this general setup i do prefer the dash mount because the lower height allows me to reach the device a little easier if you are planning on getting a mount for this location i suggest getting one with an extendable arm like this iaudi one products like the short mounts aren't going to be terribly useful unless you're planning on using your uh, smartphone as a dash cam as a side note um I did mention this before, but mounting it here uh, will increase the chances of your device overheating. Now this, now this overall area I'm not a big fan of because the entire setup is quite distracting. There's something right in the middle of my uh, windshield, which I don't like. Now, you probably get used to it over time, but you know, I try to avoid pedestrians who don't look both ways before crossing, so sometimes I might get distracted by that giant smartphone in the middle of my dash. If you're gonna get something for this location, I'd strongly go in with a magnetic mount because you're able to easily mount the device as well as uh, changing the orientation of the device. The magnetic mounts are usually smaller in size, which makes it easier to see around. And it doesn't seem, it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb like other, like this RAM mount just is just bam, in your face. For the dashboard mounting, I would use a RAM mount as well as an iAudi mount. And uh, I say this because they've got sticky pieces that you can attach to to ensure that it, you get a good dash mounting solution. Now, iAudi has a neat concept as you push your smart device into it and then the 
arms clamp down onto it, but the entire thing is not as slick as a Meneg mount. And the RAM mount requires two hands to actually mount your smartphone. Um, as a side note, if you do need something tougher, the RAM mount is probably the toughest one out of all the mounts that we've used. And it even comes with this rubbery thing that helps you uh, secure your uh, smartphone even better. When taking into account the size of your device, certain mounts that offer just a stick, no sticky pad, just a suction cup, may not stay on the windshield as long because of the weight. I do know that these uh, suction cup only mounts do tend to come off of your windshield after driving for a while. So, you know, if you don't want to take the chance of having your phone fly everywhere while you drive, uh, stick, with one, stick with an iAudi or a RAM mount. Number three is the uh, vent or CD area. And this is, in my opinion, this is the best place for people who don't need to mount their devices all the time. That's me. I only need to see my iPhone if I'm navigating to a place that I've never been to or I'm waiting for a call while I drive between places. So being able to quickly mount my iPhone in my car and remove the actual mount is very, seems very efficient to me. I personally would go with a magnetic mount for the same reasons as I've talked before. And get one, get a mount where you have a spare joint or an extra joint that allows you to turn your device to for, towards you. An example of this is one of these iFace uh, jointed uh, magnetic mounts for my vent. My only issue with these mounts is that you're actually blocking a vent. This might not be an issue in a place where the weather is mild, but I live in a place where snow and cold weather exists for 45 months out of the year, so heat is actually very important to me. Losing a vent is a big deal. Also with vent mounts, um, depending on how hot it gets, your uh, smartphone might overheat. The removal of the mount is also beneficial to people who are afraid of leaving stuff in their car. You know, being able to hide a vent mount quickly is gonna maybe ward off potential uh, people breaking into your car and taking your vent mount and the 37 cents that you have in your change dish. In terms of the size of the device, I really don't think it matters how big your phone is because the mounts are not gonna go anywhere and they're generally pretty stable. Number one is the driver's side windshield area. This is actually my preferred location for my device because it's out of the way uh, and I can still keep track of directions or monitor potential phone calls. Now, the only reason why I wouldn't keep it here is if you prefer to keep your smartphone in landscape orientation and you've got a giant phone like the iPhone 7 Plus. The iPhone 7 Plus on an, a magnetic iFace mount <laughs> is comically large in this area. It is also a smaller area, so using a bigger mount like the RAM mount might not work as well. So those are kind of all the uh, mounts and areas. If you need a full list of all the mounts and a short description of whether they're good or not, do check them in the description section below or find them on my website. If this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, I do encourage you to click subscribe as I produce content two to three times a week and my, all my reviews are based on actual usage. So I actually take the time to use them instead of just taking them out of the box, looking at them, saying they look pretty and giving a thumbs up for it. That's just not how I roll. If you have questions, leave them down there in the comments section below or you could find me on Google Plus Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can ask, and ask them on my website as well. I'm Aaron the Ho. Um, thank you for watching. Oh, difference between magnetic mounts and regular mounts. The magnetic mounts, the pros are, uh, I've been talking about the entire video, you can easily mount them, unmount them. The cons are you actually have to have a magnetic case. Now, this seems to be a little more common nowadays, but it's still something uh, that is quite bulky or you might not find. There are other solutions that allow you to attach a magnet to the back of your iPhone or uh, Android device, but that's not great either because those magnets are incredibly tough to take off. I'm not a big fan of... Make sure you've got really long fingernails before you actually go and try to take <laughs> the magnetic thing off. Uh, so those are kind of the... Uh, oh, and the last thing I will say is that those magnetic mounts, depending on how old your smartphone is, might mess with your compass. So if you're navigating with your compass, if you've got something older than an iPhone 6S, uh, your compass is going to lead you into the wrong position. Uh, so keep that in mind. So that's kind of all I got. I am sick and tired of driving really slowly around my community with a ton of iPhones as well as a uh, normal camera going. So uh, thanks for watching. Whew, I'm done. Beer time, it's time for beer time. I'm going home and drinking beer. <laughs>